Do you ever deal with insecurity? And, and if so, like, what are you most insecure about? Wow. Would you say, baby, that you could have done that full marathon without Cameron? No. Exactly. Do you curse occasionally? Do I? What is the most toxic part about <gasps> the whole influencing culture? Did Christian someone culture? say that? Yeah. Okay, we're going there. What is something you did not expect in marriage? Our first month and first month and a half was honestly pretty difficult. Are you on birth control? What is up, everybody, and welcome back to Happy and Healthy. Are you happy and healthy today, baby? I am tired. I am... You're not healthy today. I'm not healthy. I just ran a marathon. He did. And I am... I'm under the weather, uh, but I'm here. There's something going in the air this like week because... You got sick, and then my family was in town, and they all were like, I'm feeling so sick today, so I'm no. praying I don't get that. I think it was just, I honestly think running 26 miles is what made me a little under the weather, but I am, I'm pumped to do this podcast because I'm going to put you in the hot seat today. You are? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. So uh, guys, today, Caleb's going to be asking me the questions. Now, normally, you know, in the last few episodes, I asked Caleb some pressing questions yeah. that you guys wanted to know. And I did not go easy on you. I'm very I'm sorry. surprised I didn't get canceled. I I know. I think we, but I mean, you were just speaking facts, I feel like. We could even, someday we'll have to do a part three and really go a little deeper. You think so? Yeah, you know, maybe one of these days, you know. We'll see. Maybe on the Patreon? Yeah. Oh, that's Ooh, true. Oh, you guys. Guys, our Patreon, we get even deeper with what, we're, what we talk about. Uh, we're actually going to, this is going to be part one. We're going to finish this conversation on our Patreon. Mm -hmm. uh, so subscribe to that. We do two extra podcasts a month. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we just want to do a quick little recap. So if you're new here, my name is Janine. I'm a polo war. This is my husband, Caleb. I post these every single Tuesday. This is a Christian podcast to help you grow, to give you the solutions and the answers you're looking for. We are not experts. Uh, experts? That sounded weird. We are not experts, but we are, you know, Christians Speak who- for yourself. What? Okay. I'm kind of an expert. What are you an expert in? A lot of things. Like what? Name it. I mean, I, I can think of a couple <laughs> things you're not an expert in. <laughs> you're goofy. Uh, we post every Tuesday, though. But we really do want to just help you guys. Not only just, like, help you out, but just give you some entertainment as well. Like, life is too short for things to just be so boring and hard and all the things. So, like, we can have some fun here as well. Caleb's distracted. He just got his marathon photos back. Look how sick that is. Oh, you look mad. That looks good, though. That looks fire. That looks really good. Okay, so let's catch up really fast. So, just to recap, you guys, we mm. just came back from Oklahoma City yesterday, and we ran our first ever... Well, you ran your first ever full, and I ran my first ever half marathon. <laughs> oh. Wrong one. No. <laughs> Wow, go. fourth time's a try. We need to have those labeled. <laughs> you ran a half marathon. I am so proud Thank of you. Thank you. Four months ago, we weren't even running. Oh, at all. Literally, y'all, where this all started is January 1st, we were at um, Grant's Lake House, and our friends were like, hey, let's go run four miles today. And I was like, absolutely not. And they were like, no, like everyone's going, we're going to go run four miles. And I was like, okay, fine. We didn't even have like the proper shoes. I ran in pickleball shoes. <laughs> Literally pickleball shoes. Yeah. The worst shoes you could ever and run in. Four months later, I ran 26.2 miles, which barring injury, I think I'm going to run marathons every year. That, that would I, be so cool. I genuinely, a dream of mine, I want to qualify for the Boston Marathon. Really? I think I want to do that. I decided today. Uh, this is news to me. It's going to take me a few years to get there. But, wow. um, you know, I ran my first marathon in four hours and 21 minutes. My average pace was nine minutes and 59 seconds. So proud of um, you. I ran the last like five miles in an average pace, like around eight minutes. And so it was, it was really the craziest thing mm -hmm. I, I've ever done. And I'm, I'm addicted. Like I, throughout this process, it's a, opened us up to a whole new community. I think you want to start a run club. Yeah. I kind of want to just randomly post, be like, Hey guys, we're all meeting at Katie trail. Come yeah. run. Like, we're probably going to do one soon, um, so stay tuned, we, but it's so fun. We also partnered up with Bear Performance Nutrition, mm -hmm. a.k.a. BPN. They're a company out in Austin, Texas, and we love uh, them. we're partnering up with them, and they have helped us with our nutrition, 
And so you can actually, if you're like in the running space or if you just Honestly, like- just anything athletic, to yeah, be honest. If you like pre-workout, Supplements. protein- the gels, collagen, elect- electrolytes, all the things. Uh, use our code WARD uh, for 10% off. Mm-hmm. We love them. We support them. We back them up. And they are truly what got us yeah. through our marathons. I will say, guys, like it really does encourage me and encourage you guys that you can do hard things. Like you can do the things that you set your mind to. I had zero intentions this January 1st be like, I'm going to run a half marathon, but I knew I wanted to push myself in some shape or form. And so this is your sign, whatever it is, push yourself, set a goal and set your mind to it, get accountability. And I promise you, you can do anything. It was the best experience. It was so much fun. The adrenaline was bumping and I definitely want to do another one. I want to try to beat my time. I did two hours and eight minutes, which is pretty good, I guess, for your first one. That's what everybody was saying to me. And, um, I ran a nine 46 pace the entire time. And so actually not the entire time, but that was my total overall pace. And I had a blast. And so we're, we're hurting today. I'm not going to lie. Today is kind of like recovery and we're trying to get our lives back together. Our house was a mess. Mm -hmm. Y'all our house flooded this past weekend when we were gone. Yeah. That was some tea. I haven't talked about that. My garage flooded and it started leaking into the house, which I'm like, oh my gosh, owning a home has been so fun and also so stressful. So we were managing that this week, uh, but nothing happened too bad. So we're just trying to regather our lives today. Yeah. The guys, the half marathon marathon experience with the, uh, the adrenaline you feel, if you played sports before, it's the closest feeling to like a, a championship game. But you, the, the difference is, is you have strangers cheering for yeah. you thousands of people and it is uh it's hard but if you can get your it, 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 get if your you mind can get right your mind and your brain to to shut up and uh get your you know body moving it will change your life because the tra- daring mm-hmm. i would almost argue the training leading up to it was almost more fun because now it's over and now, yeah, we now have, we're like dang what do we do now yeah you know and so but anyway, so yeah, we're going to run one next February. It's in Austin. It's the Austin marathon. I'll do the half again. I'll probably do the full. So come hang out. Shout out to Claritin for supporting this episode and providing us with samples. So if you guys are anything like me and you struggle with allergies, raise your hand because I am right there with you. I get super itchy throat, itchy ears, and I sneeze like a crazy woman. And it really does prevent me from wanting to take my daily walks with my husband. But luckily for those of us who live with a symptoms of allergies, we can live Claritin Clear with Claritin D. It is designed for serious allergy sufferers. Claritin D has two powerful ingredients in just one pill that relieves your allergy symptoms and decongests your nose so you can breathe better. This double action combination of prescription strength allergy medicine and the best decongestant available relieves sneezing, a runny nose, itchy and watery eyes, and an itchy nose and sinus congestion and pressure with an ease, which is exactly what I need. So I have been using them anytime that I have allergies, which has been many, many times. I have found that it has definitely helped me so much where I can go outside again and enjoy my day. So if you guys are ready to live life as if you don't have allergies, it is time to live Claritin Clear. It is fast and powerful. Relief is just a quick trip away. Find Claritin D at the pharmacy counter. Ask for Claritin D at your local pharmacy counter. You don't even need a prescription. Go to Claritin.com right now for a discount so you can live Claritin clear. Use as directed. Okay, let's get into today's episode. We're really excited. Let's get into these juicy questions from y'all. I think a lot of people want to know this. I know, a lot of people. Are you on birth control? No. No. Listen, guys, we, we didn't want to, you know, for us, I just, I've seen so many bad situations where women would get on birth control and it would like mess with their hormones. Mm -hmm. And so I think both of us were like, you know what, we can, you know, prevent other ways. Yeah. You know, but that's a, that's a deep debate whether or not. Yeah, it is. Using protection or prevention is, is playing um, God is playing God. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. I don't really know exactly where I stand on him. And obviously we are preventing it. So I think that that's kind of what we're doing. Like, I personally don't feel like it's the worst thing ever because otherwise I would have been pregnant my first week of marriage and we just weren't ready for that yet. And of course, like 
I think on the other side of it, you know, when will you ever be quote unquote ready? I mean, yes, you can try to plan as best as possible to be financially ready, emotionally ready, have your house ready, your marriage be more stable. Like all those things can bless your future kids. But if you were to get pregnant, it's like you wrote the punches and know that children are a blessing and that God can totally still help you in that process. And that's truly what we believe, but we didn't feel like we were ready. So no, I'm not on birth control. We were doing other things to prevent. I don't know why this is so taboo and it feels a little uncomfortable to talk about, but so many people have asked me and we basically just tracked my cycle. We also use, we just, let's just be honest. Yeah. We use condoms and that shouldn't be weird to say. And so that's really what we do. We just track my cycle. We use condoms and we just basically do that. And I don't think there's really anything wrong with that. And especially me being 30 now, I did not want to go to birth control. I did not want to mess up my hormones. Your body needs significant amounts of time to recover and re get your hormones back together after getting off the pill. And so that was just not something I wanted to do. We do want to have kids, you know, potentially in the next year or two. So I was like, nah, it's just not worth it. So this is working out fine for us. I do get the debate though. I get the, I get it, yeah. it is an interesting thing, like preventing children. I don't think that was God's intention. I don't do think I so think, either. I think it's morally neutral. It'd be unwise to like, well, you can have 30 kids. Right. You know, it's like, that's not, that's not realistic. But, uh, but in the, in the biblical times they did. Yeah, they, they had did. A, they lot had a lot, of, a lot of kids. And so I do, I do get the debate and, and I'm not saying that birth control or prevention is wrong, but I do think it's, it is something to think about because I don't know. I just, I, I don't think God intended sex for us to have to use condoms and all the things. Right. And I, and that's what we talk about all the time. We're like, I just don't think that God intended for there to be this barrier between you and your spouse. But you know, the Bible says be fruitful and multiply. And that's what God's will is for us is to have kids, to raise them, to know God, to make disciples and for them to make disciples. Um, but you know, God also did wire women's bodies in a certain way where our cycle, we can't get pregnant in certain time frames, and that there's certain periods when we're ovulating where you really can get pregnant. And so I just think that God also knew, Hey, if you just went according to your time clock and your body schedule and the cycle that I've blessed you with, you can use it to your advantage and also use it to your advantage in other ways as well. And so that's where I do think, yeah, I, I understand that God did help us in some shapes or form. Cause I mean, I'm sure God was like, yeah, she can't have, she can't be pregnant over and over and over and over and over. Like some women would literally die if they did that. And so I think God knew that as well for us. Uh, this next question, I'll kind of paraphrase for them, but you know, you're in social media. Like, do you ever deal with insecurity? And, and if so, like, what are you most insecure about? Wow. Oh my gosh. Do I deal with insecurity? You know, I wrote an entire chapter about this in my book and I literally said in the chapter, this is the hardest chapter for me to write because it's not something that you can ever fully overcome. I think there's different insecurities for different seasons. And so for me, my insecurities growing up were really just disliking the way I looked. And then as I got older, it was just, it was disliking, um, it was feeling insecure about my abilities and my gifts and who I was and was I even making a difference and did anything I do mattered and why did this girl get what I wanted and does any guy like me? And so there's different insecurities for different seasons. Right now, I definitely think I have my own insecurities. I mean, I start to see, you know, this sounds weird, but I think the 30 year olds on this uh, podcast will understand. And then when you get to 30, you'll also understand. And this is something I've been wanting to open up about anyway and just talk about is, you will see your body change. There's like apparently like three or four different time frames when you'll see your body change. It's around when you hit puberty. It's around when you hit 25. There's another one when you hit around 28, 29, 30. And then when you hit about your 40s. And obviously your body is always going to be changing, but there's supposed to be multiple different times of frames where you specifically see your body and your face change. For me, being 30, I am seeing my face change. And I've been annoying. I've been talking to Caleb a lot where I'm like, babe, I'm noticing my face changing. And this is actually really hard for me to say because aging is a beautiful thing. It's a gift from God. It's more wisdom. It's more life. It's more experience. It's the ability to have more life and be like, God, thank you for allowing me to at least get to 30. You start to see the fat from your face dissolving, your collagen dissolving. I'm starting to see my eyes sinking more. My face is sagging more. My cheeks are sagging more. I start to see my teeth look different. I start to see more stretch marks. I mean, sagging skin in places that I never thought before. And I remember older women always saying that to me like, oh, honey, be thankful for your body now because one day it's not going to look like that. 
And I just never thought that I was like, oh, no, no, no. Like this body surely won't change. And Shruti, it's changing. <laughs> and uh, that's hard for me. And it's weird to see those physical, tangible changes in your body where you're like, oh, I, I don't think I can get that fat back underneath my eyes anymore. I'm starting to see that sink. And so I'm going through that process now where it's not dramatic. I'm still very confident in myself. I still love my body, love myself. Not like where I'm obsessed and a narcissist, but more where I'm like, okay, God, I'm seeing these changes. I, I am getting older. Thank you for giving me this body. But having to still reconcile in the fact that I don't look the way that I used to look. And, and people have even commented that to me. Like, you don't look the same when you were 20. And I'm like, well, yeah, of course. It's been 10 years later. I mean, mm -hmm. my face changes. Your face does change. It naturally does. Your shape changes. Your fat changes. And so um, that's where I've been a little insecure where like I'll look at photos of myself and I'll see this really drastic change. And I'm like, whoa, I, I almost don't recognize myself. And so I'm almost having to readapt to this new self of mine, but I still like it. So don't get me wrong. I still like it. I'm just having to readapt to be like, I look different and that's okay. And that's going to continue to happen. So long winded answer, but I would say more that and just continuing to remind myself God's truth, who God says I am, that this is a gift that I get to age. It's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And that really like, I'm only supposed to just be beautiful in my husband's eyes. And that's what matters. And you think I'm beautiful. It shocks me when you're like, I'm aging or I don't, I, I, I feel like I look ugly because in my opinion, you look the same from when I met you. Second of all, you get prettier by every, I think every other month, I, <laughs> not even every other month, every freaking day I see you, like you get prettier. And I'm Thank not just you. saying that. I genuinely mean it. And so you're beautiful. Thank you, baby. So it's crazy to me sometimes, but I have to learn and men, you know, listen up, like empathize with your woman when she's saying, I feel insecure. Don't mm -hmm. you know, invalidate that. Um, but okay, that's it. That's good. I got, yeah. I got, I got another good question. Oh, you just one second. I was just going to say, but yeah, if you guys do want to learn more about this, I, I wrote an entire chapter about this in my book. It's called insecurities and confidence in chapter five. And so I have more thoughts in there. I love a good comeback story. Tiger Woods, 2019 Masters, Boston Red Sox, 2004 World Series, flared pants. And who can forget the 2024 Good Ranchers price lock guarantee? You heard that right. Good Ranchers price lock guarantee is back for a limited time. This is the only price lock on 100% American meat you can find, and you do not want to miss it. This is the final week to subscribe and let Good Ranchers lock in your price and protect you from inflation until 2026. This is huge, you guys. Simply subscribe to any one of their American meat boxes, and your price will be inflation-proof for 18 months. Good Ranchers is where I get all my meat because I can trust that it's tender and full of flavor every every time. You guys, it tastes so good. Trust me. With meat prices continuing to go up and quality at the store going down, Good Ranchers Price Shield will not only protect your budget and save you hundreds, but also help you put 100% American beef, chicken, pork, and wild-caught seafood on your plate that you can trust. Plus, get an extra 10% off your subscription with my code HEALTHY at GoodRanchers.com today. What I really love about Good Ranchers is their commitment to transparency. They believe Believe that you have the right to know what is in your food. They're amazing supporters of this show, so go support them and take the mystery out of all the meat you buy. This exclusive limited time price lock offer ends soon, so if you want to secure your best price on meat until 2026, go to goodranchers.com and use my code HEALTHY for 10% off your subscription and price lock guarantee. Goodranchers.com, American meat delivered. Okay, so this is like a part a two part question is first, would you describe yourself as a Christian influencer? And if so, what is the most toxic part about the whole influencing culture? Did Christian someone culture? say that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. We're going there. Um, I don't know. I, this is actually like another hard thing. Sometimes I feel weird saying this. It's like, I went from being a YouTuber to a podcaster to an influencer to then all of a sudden being labeled Christian influencer and I don't mind it. I mean, I'm honored to carry that badge because I am a Christian influencer, but I more like to just say like, I'm a content creator who's a Christian. Like I believe in Jesus. I will die on that hill the rest of my life. So I'm not offended if anybody calls me that, but I do think that it kind of puts me in a box. And I think something about me is 
I hate being put in boxes. I hate being labeled one thing where it's like you're stuck in that and then people are like never let you get out of it. I want to be able to evolve and have different opinions and people not only be like, oh, well, you, you're you a Christian influencer. So if you are a Christian influencer, you have to be blank. And it's like, no. And I feel like you never want to be put in a box of where you can only talk about a certain subject. Yes. There's so many things you're passionate about mm-hmm. that, you know, not aren't really Christian like running or mm-hmm. makeup or lifestyle. Exactly. And I think that's where I've struggled a lot is I remember, you know, people telling me, well, if you're a Christian influencer, then why are you talking about blank? Why are you talking about makeup? Why are you talking about fashion? Why are you talking about Amazon? And that's where I was struggled. I was like, just because I'm a Christian doesn't mean I can't all of a sudden like to do my makeup. I can't like to try out new beauty products and try to get new cute clothing for the summertime. And so that's where I would struggle when people try to put me in a box and label me and be like, you're a Christian influencer. So you're only allowed to talk about Christianity. And I'm like, so do I lose my desire and passion of everything else in life? No. And God wired me to like certain things and like, and just wired you to like certain things. And so your passions don't die because you become a Christian. They actually become amplified, I think. And God allows you to use those passions to bless other people. And that's the whole point of my platform, truly. So are you a Christian influencer? Would you say that? I, I would say I am, yes. But I also like to say, like, that's not my identity. I First like, and foremost, I'm just a Christian. And I'm not just a Christian influencer. That's not my identity, you know? I feel like you're a social media creator who is a Christian. Yeah. I feel like that, because I hate the term. I hate that term. Because it's like, we all know certain parts of that world is like very cringy. And I feel like I've even told you like, cause I wasn't in this space before I met you. And so I kind of had an outsider's perspective. Mm-hmm. And so I got a. there's been several times you and I've had conversations where I'm like, yeah, I just feel like that's kind of cringe. Like, or like, Hey, I just feel like that's a little unrelatable. Yeah. Or like, Hey, I feel like that is just, you know, I don't know. There, there's so much of that space where it is like, it is interesting. And mm-hmm. I'm not talking bad about it because we're we're in that. But I'm like, hey, I want things between us to be to authentic. always be authentic, to mm-hmm. always be organic. Like we decided to run a marathon. So then we can create content around that experience, not saying, oh, how can we spiritualize and over spiritualize every aspect of our life mm-hmm. where we are? Let's say we're running the marathon and we're making we're just like making things up about it just to get views and just to, you know what I mean? I think that's exactly where I'm seeing the difference is we really genuinely, like authenticity is one of my like pillars of life. It is so important to me that the things that I do and the content that I put out feels authentic. And honestly, it works against me because people will say, hey, can you please talk about blank? And if it doesn't feel authentic to me in that moment and I can't genuinely speak about it from a place of I've walked through it, I understand it, I've educated myself on it, blah, 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 blah. I just can't do it. And I'm like, I try so hard and then I'll make the video and I'll be like, I hate this video. So if I hate something, I can't put it out. And where I really think this space is getting a little interesting is people are doing things because they know it'll get views. They know it'll work. They know it hits the algorithm. They know like uh, what catchy, trendy phrase, what viral video can I do in this space that's going to get me to blow up, become more famous, to get more opportunities. And to me, it's like, if it's not authentic and God ordained and God given, don't do it. And that's where I'm seeing the problem of this space is because becoming a Christian influencer is actually now popular, which is very interesting. It was never a thing before. Now in today's day and age, it's like people are coming to Jesus, which is amazing. People are talking about Jesus. Amazing. But if it's not authentic, I'm saying stay in the dark room a little bit longer. Stay in the private moments a little bit longer. Really develop your faith offline first before you go and post it publicly, before you're telling everybody what to do, what the scripture means. Like you got to know first and foremost, what does the scripture mean? What does God say about you? Who is God to you before you can go tell that to other people? And that's where I'm seeing a little bit of toxicity is people are just like, using God in some senses to ride the wave and be like, this will get me to go viral. It's not about going viral. It's it's about gaining intimacy first and foremost with Jesus and then sharing the hope of that later. But that's where it starts first and foremost is you and God. Yeah. And I don't think, I think there's a, a, um, a pressure that people think, Oh, just cause I'm a Christian. I need to like, for me, I don't really post a ton of like about my faith online. I, I post occasionally and I'll post stuff, 
But I feel like back in the day, when I was in like high school especially, I used to do it all the time. Mm-hmm. But my intentions were off. And for me, I just like, you know, you post about your faith a lot. Mm-hmm. And for me, it is personal. And I and I really, I, I, I struggle with the uh, the scripture where it's like, go pray alone. Mm-hmm. And go be alone. Don't let anyone see your good deeds. And I'm not saying you're in the wrong for what you do. But I do struggle with that like, okay, what what's the line here like if i am i allowed and this leads into my next question that i saw like is it okay if i'm at a coffee shop like is it wrong for me to like post that Mm -hmm. i'm reading the bible yeah and i think again what you were saying and what this is super super important is your intentions there's been times where i didn't have good intentions and i think a lot of us if we're really honest with ourselves we could be like, oh yeah, I posted that because I wanted someone to see it. I wanted someone to think I was holier. I wanted them to think I was a good person. And so I think it's like, what is your motive? Is your motive to share scripture and encourage somebody, encourage someone to get in the word, to get someone to see the word of God is good and it breathes life to your bones? Or do you want it to be like, hey, everybody look at me, I'm reading my Bible. And so only you can really know that. You and God can really know that. And so pause before you post and ask yourself, Is this authentic? Are my intentions pure? Why am I posting this? And just give yourself grace. Not every single time we're going to get this right. I'm not going to get this right every single time. I'm not on a perfect pedestal where I'm going to get this right every single time. But there's times where like, y'all maybe don't see me post about my faith for a week plus. And people are probably like, what the heck? I thought she was a Christian influencer. I thought she was going to share her faith. I thought she was going to share daily encouragement. Sometimes I just don't got it. Sometimes I just don't have anything to share. Sometimes I'm learning myself. God, what is it that I need to know? And if I don't have it, I'm not going to post it. And so that's where I think we need to be careful is not artificially manufacturing content and things just because we have to hit an algorithm or a status quo or a number or something. We're like, I've got to post it. I've got to post it. That's not what God wants for us. Let it be organic and authentic and true and God ordained and something that God has given you to share. And that's where I really just always want to check myself is like, God, is this what you've told me to share or am I over spiritualizing this or am I doing this because I know this is going to get me views? Yeah, that's tough. It's tough. It's tough. But again, only really you can know that. That's good. Okay. That was a long-winded answer. I'm sorry, guys. All right. Leading into the next, uh, what is is something you did not expect in marriage from Caleb? What's your favorite thing about him? So you guys, you know, we're we're about six months in. On June 6th, June 12th, it'll be six months in. And let me tell you, it just gets better and better and better and better. And Maddie and I just did an episode on marriage and- excuse me, we were talking about just like the things we've learned and the things we wish we knew. And our first month and first month and a half was honestly pretty difficult. And we were just learning so much. It was so new. Explain that. Cause I feel like when you say it was pretty difficult, people may assume like the worst. No, I wouldn't say it was the worst. I mean, everyone says this when you get married, it's just new. And like, we're still newlyweds. We're still learning so much. And so you're learning sleep schedules you know, sex, you're learning how to have healthy conflict, who does what, how to communicate your needs, how to express when you're angry, not to lash out at this person. You're learning church, community, your friendships change. I mean, there's so much newness. This person is there every waking moment. How do you have individual quiet times? How do you let them know, hey, can you please take out the trash without being a nag and a pest? And there's still times where I'm still learning this. And so in the beginning, you're learning so much, but I'm telling you guys, it gets better and better. And I think in the beginning, you don't have the tools quite yet in your tool belt. You don't have the routine. Yeah. You, You can prepare as best as you want in singleness, but really when you get into it, that's when you're doing it. That's when you're like, oh, okay, well, do I have the fruit of the spirit? Am I a good wife? Am I a good partner? And a lot of it is trial and error. Sometimes you don't get it right. You yell at each other. You get mad. You get frustrated. You go on a prayer walk. You're like, Lord, help me be a good wife. <laughs> Multiple times. I well, need we're, that. We're like, you, when you're single for 25, 30 years, you are, you are ingrained to be selfish. Oh, yeah. And I had to learn so much of just like my selfishness of, with the things I like to do. Like I didn't realize I was selfish until I got married mm. and um, it exposes that, but that's like kind of cliche. Everyone says that I, I, I do think this is the toxic side that you see, you know, you look at a married couple 13 down 13 years down the road and go, they, they divorced. Mm. I thought they were perfect. And it's because they never talked about the things they were going through. They never, and there's a, there's a line to like, not, I don't think you should overshare because I, I think you see that a lot. But I think it's it's 
freedom to like be sit here and go, you know, it was difficult at times. Yeah. Uh, when we say difficult, we know divorce is off the table. We know that like we can have difficult seasons, but we entered a covenant. So it's okay that we have a day or two where we just, you know, are having a hard time like liking each other for those mm -hmm. day or two. But we know that we love each other. Like right. We know that we signed up and we declared to the Lord, like we are a covenant, we are one. And it goes so much further than, than just like, you know, oh, it's like we got each other's nerves. Cool. Right. Well, Which is going to happen. It's going to happen. But it gives us so much freedom to go, Honestly, we're so candid with each other. We could look at each other in the face and go, "Hey, you're really, you're really making me upset." Yeah, right now. you're annoying the crap out of me, but yeah. I love you. But you're annoying me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm telling you guys, like, it's it truly when you're with the right person, it gets so much better, more fun. You learn more. Like, I literally told Kill before this podcast, I was like, "Babe, we like just signed up for life together, yeah. and we knew each other for a year and a half before getting married." And truly, what we said to each other is. We're both so surrendered to Christ. We love Jesus. We love each other. So when you're committed to God and to honoring that covenant and putting each other first and Christ first, like it's going to work. And so we're seeing the fruit of that, of us both growing, evolving, spending more time with God saying, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Learning each other's gifts, what things that annoy them, things that bless them. And it's just really freaking fun. And we're just we're like thriving blast. now. We're having a blast right now. We're having so much fun right now. What's your favorite thing about me? I mean, freaking everything. Like, truly, I love seeing you inspire me. When he did the marathon, that inspired me. I was so proud of him. I was like, this guy is such a hard worker. And I know, like, you would go to bat for me. I know you would fight for me. I know you would defend me. I've seen this man just, like, protect me from people that are trying to harm me, people that are trying to, you know, abuse me or take advantage of me or things that I like didn't see. And he's like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to let this person come in and take advantage of you any longer when they were for so long. And so I've just seen you like be my protector. And I think that's what like a godly husband should be for his wife. So Amen. I just love you. We talk in baby voices a lot too. Yeah. Maybe let's tell yeah. them our stupid nickname. That's our toxic trait. No, that's between us. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It's important to me that the supplements I take are of the highest quality. And that's why for over a year, I've been drinking AG1. Unlike many supplement brands, AG1 conducts relentless testing to set the standard for purity and potency. It is also researched and developed by an in-house team of scientists, doctors, and nutritionists with decades of experience in their respective fields. Y'all, quality for AG1 isn't just a buzzword. It's a commitment backed by expert-led scientific research, high-quality ingredients, industry-leading manufacturing, and rigorous testing. At each step of the process, AG1 goes above and beyond industry standards. I know I can trust what's in every scoop of AG1 because they obsess over product quality, the standards of manufacturing partners, and sustainable practices. Taking care of my health shouldn't be complicated, and AG1 simplifies this by simply just covering my nutritional basis and setting myself up for success in just 60 seconds, making it so there aren't a million different pills and capsules to keep track of. I mean, who wants that? So just one scoop of AG1 mixed in water every single day. AG1's ingredients are heavily researched by efficacy, quality, and I love that every scoop also includes prebiotics, probiotics, and digestive enzymes for gut support. So if you want to replace your multivitamin and more, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first subscription at drinkag1.com slash healthy. That is drinkag1.com slash healthy. Check it out. What do I do if I do not feel loved by my friends? Tell them. Hmm. I mean, truly, like, how can they know that they don't, let's, they're not loving you well if they don't know that they're not loving you well? Let's do these, like, quick. Okay, let's so, try to bust it out. How, how to let your guard down and be honest to a guy that you like? Tell them. <laughs> I think a lot of this is just putting yourself out there and knowing that the right people are going to stay in your life and the wrong people are going to leave. And so you might as well try express your needs. People can't know what you're thinking and feeling if you don't tell them and you'll learn that in marriage as well. And so just be honest and maybe you could pray before you do it. Just 
Don't accuse them of anything, but just say, hey, this is how I'm feeling and see how they respond. And if the right people are in your life, they'll stay, they'll understand, and they will work with you through it. Amen. Are we in the end times? I don't know. The Bible literally says in Matthew that no one will ever know. No one will know the hour. Jesus won't even know the hour. The angels won't even know the hour Mm -hmm. when God comes back and comes to do that. So I think there's signs. I think there's been signs. I think everyone says like, oh my gosh, we're in the end times and there's rumors of wars and there's tornadoes and storms and all these crazy things that are happening But truly, I mean, you just have to be ready. No one knows the hour of the day. So just be ready and stay alert and be informed of what's going on and read your Bible. How long does a guy need to be free of pornography before he enters a healthy relationship? I'd say at least six months to a year. Because even in dating, you know, that temptation is going to pop back up. As soon as God places a godly person in front of this man. The enemy tries to immediately lure him back and bring him back to his old ways to prevent this godly relationship from happening. And so I would say at least six months to a year, and you should have the ability and access to ask him and him be transparent. Mm -hmm. Have you looked? What has happened? What have you done? And he needs to be honest with you. He should not be like, it's none of your business. No, it's my business if I'm going to be marrying you and knowing what I'm signing up for. And so I would say that. How to know when you've met your future husband? Um, first of all, he's going to be a godly spouse. He's going to line up with what the Bible says, what a godly spouse looks like. He's going to honor God with his mind, his actions, his talents, his words, um, purity. If he's serving Christ, if he wants to make disciples, if you feel peace about it, people around you are agreeing with you and saying, this is a good partner. And this person makes you look like Jesus. You don't have a ton of red flags. You don't have a ton of questions or doubts and it just aligns it fits well it makes sense everyone else agrees it makes sense you guys are going the same path you guys are going the same route you both want to make godly children if that's what you want to do and you want to make disciples together and his goal is to lead you and make you look more like christ and to prepare to be a blameless bride in front of christ when he returns and so truly it is about the about the gospel and this person wanting to make the gospel known and make you look more like Jesus and that you have fun with them. Yeah. Like have fun with this person. It shouldn't be so complicated. You shouldn't have to be like, Oh, I have to marry this person. You should want to marry the person and you're obsessed with them. You know, how would you do things differently post-graduation? What a question. Um, so many things. JP always says to change your playmates and your playgrounds. And that's exactly what I would do. I would change who I hung out with and where I hung out with them. Right when I graduated college, I was healing from a toxic relationship. I went straight back to partying and people that were not beneficial for me and not uplifting me and encouraging me. And so that's truly what I would do is I would immediately get involved in a church. I would surround myself with godly community. I would serve. I would get connected. I would not do life alone. I would literally die with no secrets. I would tell everybody the dirtiest things I've ever done. I would expose it. I would bring everything I've done into the light so I could find freedom. And I would just wholeheartedly chase after Jesus And that is what transformed my life when I did transform my life a couple years later was doing all the things I just told you. And so instead what I was doing is I was playing hypocrisy. I was playing a double life. I was pretending to be a Christian and then really just not acting like one at all. And so I would chase hard after Jesus, find other people to chase hard after Jesus with and be connected in the body of Christ, be accountable, be vulnerable be consistent in the word and with people and just have um, accountability. Like I said, accountability, accountability, vulnerability, consistency. And um, I can't think of the other one. (laughs) That's good. Do you curse occasionally? Do I? It'll slip sometimes. Very, very, very rarely. But I would say, I, I literally can't think of the last time I did. I mean, I say crap a lot. It's not cussing. But I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think. I would say once in a blue moon, if I'm like really, really mad or if I like stub my toe, but that's still not cute. Yeah. Well, what, what, how do you, how do you reconcile that? The, the exact question is what are your thoughts on cussing? It's a hard habit to break uh, when you've been doing it for so long. Yeah. I mean, I used to cuss. I remember I used to cuss in college. And I remember that the Bible literally says out of the, abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and so what you're filling your heart up with in your mind with is going to come out of your mouth and so the way that you're going to be able to break this habit is again changing your playmates and your playgrounds and also what you input into your brain 
Because if you're listening to music, movies, podcasts, any sort of mediums that are going to be filling your mind with cuss words, it's going to flow out of you, what you put into your heart and your mouth and or what you put into your mind, into your heart. And so watch what you're inputting because that's what's going to output out of you. I talk about this in my book because it's really, really true. And so be mindful of what you're mindful of. And I think this is going to change your life when you start to input godly music, edifying things to your spirit. The Bible says whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is holy, whatever is righteous, dwell on these things. These are the things that we should be dwelling on. And that's what's going to come out of you. And also, if you hang around a ton of people that are cussing and they don't think it's a problem, you are a byproduct of your surroundings. And so if your friends are like, it's not that big of a deal, like who cares? You're going to make, you're going to continue to cuss. And so try to find godly community that's going to help you better this. And so maybe there's a way that you can try to incentivize yourself to do this. Maybe if you're like, every time I cuss, I am going to have to put $5 in a jar. I'm going to have to pay a friend. I'm going to have to do something where there's something on the line that's going to cut this bad habit. And that's really going to help you do that more. But truly, I think just filling your mind with more godly things, godly worship is going to help get rid of the ungodly things. What was different about Caleb than any other guy you dated? Um, okay. I think the number one thing is every other guy left me constantly wondering and I hated it. This is just like a whole other episode. Every other dude played unintentional or intentional games where there was always some sort of chase. It was like, I was always wondering, are you going to pick me? Are you going to choose me? Are you going to marry me? Are you going to commit to me? And it constantly left left my heart in a state of panic and wondering and living kind of in fear of like, I have to perform to get this guy's love. I have to do something to get this guy to stay to like me. So I have to overgive, overshare, overdo everything when that's not the point. The point is that I am the prize and the man should be the pursuer and have you be the treasure that he has to find. And you treasured me. You sought me, you pursued me, you wanted me, you chase after me. I didn't have to do anything to earn your love and to get your love. It's the same way with God. We don't have to do anything to earn your love and get God's love. It's just by simply being who he made you to be, that is enough. And you love me for me. It felt like every other guy was like me plus this. Hey, I need you to change this. Or I don't like when you do this. I don't like when you don't wear makeup. I don't like when you do wear makeup. I don't like when you wear this outfit. I don't like this. I want to change this. When you say this, and it constantly felt like I was striving. I was in a hamster wheel of like performance, performance, performance. Like, okay, to get him to like me, I do this. Okay, I have to stop talking like this. I have to stop dressing like this. I have to do my makeup like this. I needed, my family needs to be this. And it was exhausting. And the right guy is going to like you for you. And yes, he's going to sharpen you. He's going to make you better. He's going to say, hey, I don't like when you cuss. I don't like when you do this. This needs to be better. He's going to make you look more like Jesus because that's what a good godly man does. But he's not going to try to change the very being of who you are. He's not going to say, I don't like your skin color. I don't like when you talk like that. When you try to make those jokes, that's cringy. You give me the ick. There was things that I would do that I remember my ex was like, I don't like when you tell stories that way. Or I don't like when you do this. And I was like, but that's just who I am. Like, I don't, I don't know who else you want me to be. And you never did that to me. And so just loving the person for who they is, who they are is so beautiful. And that was Caleb. Like I felt like Caleb just sought me and pursued me and was like, I just want you for who you are. And that was so beautiful. So thank you, baby. You're so welcome. That was a clip. I love you. I love you too. Y'all, who you are is enough. It's not you yeah. plus blank, and that's why they love you. It's you plus nothing, and that's it. Like, who you are is enough. They should choose you for you, and they should honestly make you better, not make you worse. And so, man, don't let this person make you more insecure. The God, the man that God has for you should not make you more unconfident and more insecure. They should make you more confident and more secure in who God already made you to be. Amen. What would you, uh, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who wants to run a half marathon and would you ever do a full? (gasps) Ah! I don't know. Honestly, I don't know about doing a full because I think it's really, really, really hard on my body. You're thinking about it more now. I know, but literally, okay, y'all never say never. I won't say never, but as of right now, I don't think so. I just think, especially with me wanting to have kids, I just don't know how hard that would be on my body. 
it does kind of mess up your hormones a little bit. It's so much stress on your body as a female. So I don't know. I definitely will do another half. I really loved it. But I mean, it put my body in some pain. Yeah. But the pain was worth it. It was so fun. It was really fun. I can't stop um, talking about it. I know. We can't shut up about it. I'm sorry, guys. My advice, though, is get an accountability partner. At least train, I would say, four months advance. Get the right shoes. I will say, y'all, it's an investment. You have to get the right shoes, the belt. got to get the playlist. Get the right supplements, the right training program. But mainly, I would say, don't do it alone. Get a friend. Get a boyfriend. Get whoever. <laughs> I'm like, get a boyfriend to do a half marathon. No, if you already have a boyfriend or somebody find accountability and do it with them. I promise you there's going to be days where you're like, I do hate not. This. I hate wow. my life. I hate all of you. But when you cross that finish line, you're like, wow, that was worth it. Oh my gosh. It's so rewarding. I'm about to, I'm going to run another one. Um, I think I can't tell what I'm going to do. I, th I think I'm going to run another one in september or october you are i think so well you know what babe break sub four so do three hours and 59 minutes in september october and then in february three hours and 30 minutes wow y'all mark his words i think that's what i want to do so so to guess up caleb really fast but and also just to talk about this the bible literally always talks about how it is not good for man to be alone like how two are better than one Woe to the man, pity to the man that falls and has no one to pick him up. The Bible talks so much about friendship and partnership and accountability and being with people. Would you say, baby, that you could have done that full marathon without Cameron? No. Exactly. I could have finished, but it would have taken me five plus hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, talk, talk about that a little bit. So I ran the full marathon with one of my best friends and he's a, he's a, he's a marathon runner. He's like a professional. He's insane. Marathon runner. He ran the Houston marathon in two hours and 53 minutes. That's a six forty nine pace. I think maybe, maybe a little, maybe a little faster. Um, and so I ran it with him guys. My intentions was to run the full marathon in five, like four hours and 59 minutes. That was my goal. It was like going to be like an 11, you know, 15 pace. Um, and I ran it in a 9.59 pace because I had Cameron. He kept my pace. He encouraged me. He was championing you the it's entire time. It's like if you time. have someone with you doing life with, you can go so much fast or so much further. And faster. There's a, um, there's a quote that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with somebody. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so true. Going further is a lot better than going faster because ultimately you get tired. You get burnt out by yourself. Yeah. And guys, when I tell you I ran 26 miles and I didn't struggle until I hit mile 24, the most I ever ran before the marathon was 20 miles. I trained for two months and odds are like I should not have been able to run that distance at that speed with the training that I did. Mm. And it doesn't make sense. It's other, it has to be the Lord plus Cameron having him there. Cause I would tell him, I'm like, okay, I want to do a, you know, nine fifty nine pace. And so he would go and I would just, I would follow him. Mm -hmm. And it's like, have people like that in your life. If you, if you're, if you're struggling in purity, if you're struggling in anything, in self-confidence, okay, find someone who's confident, find somebody who doesn't struggle with that and follow them. That is such good advice. And it's such a good analogy just for life in general. Truly, it is the power of people and a power of accountability. So this is your sign. If you want to do something in life, pick someone to do it with you. Say, hey, will you run this marathon with me? Will you train with me? Will you go to this new workout class with me? Like get someone to do the hard things with you. And it makes it so much easier yeah. when you don't feel alone. And maybe you don't have somebody, but maybe you've just got to be the advocate for yourself until you find somebody or you start and then you start bringing people along with you and watch what community you'll build along the way. And so amazing. Yeah. How to deal when all your friends are in relationships and I am single as a Pringle. Y'all I've been there. I've done that. I'm so sorry. It, it really is. It's so sucky because you feel kind of like a fish out of water where you're like, really God, why me? That I've been in a situation like that where it was literally me and another girl we were the only two single and everyone else was married. Everyone else was engaged. Everyone else was about to get engaged. 
And truly it's like, you're just having to lament to the Lord and be like, God, why? But just remembering all the truths that I've talked about in past episodes, that God's not going to have you in that season for nothing. And he's not going to have that season be wasted for nothing. And it's going to be a test to your character and a test to who you are as a friend and as a person to be able to still show up and say, I'm going to celebrate them. I'm going to be happy for them. And honestly, consider that a blessing that there's relationships around you that you can take advice from. You can decide, decide, I want this from that relationship. I don't want that from relationship. This is a relationship that I would, I, I admire. I can look up to when the time comes, I can ask them questions. They can help vet out the future person. And so it's a blessing that you probably get to see good godly marriages around you or hopefully. And that's what I had. Like I got to see so many relationships around me to when I brought Caleb around, these people had my back. I mean, when they were like, yes, we love Caleb. We champion Caleb. All the husbands took him in. It was so fun. And so don't be the girl that's just like, bye, and dips out. Still hang out with your single friends. Like find some single friends that you can relate to and do life with, but don't ditch the married people because I can promise you there's still lessons to be learned from them. There's still you know, just because someone's married doesn't mean that they have no value to you just because you're single. And so there's still so much value in these friendships. And so still like, using it for all it's worth, like making the best of these friendships, the best of this time, the best of this moment, reshifting your perspective to be like, okay, God, it's not my time. It's their time right now, but I'm going to be the friend that celebrates when they celebrate and rejoices when they rejoice and weeps when they weep because y'all life is hard. In our friend group right now, we have so many people going through the hardest things right now. Miscarriages, houses being burned down, people losing loved ones, people having babies that are born, stillborn, crazy things. And regardless of the season that you're in, it's looking outward and saying, how can I pray for them? Show up for them, bless them. Like tomorrow we have some friends going through a really hard season. We're about to bring them dinner tomorrow and go pray over them because we know that life is so much bigger than just marriage and singleness. It truly is. And so I am not negating and dismissing your feelings because I was once there too. But I think the more that you can outward focus and just pray and serve the Lord and get busy serving God, the easier the season's going to be. And when the time is right, he's going to bring you the right person. And so work on gaining all the fruits of the spirit now, being a good friend now, preparing to be a good wife now. Watch the previous episode where I talk about that. And when the time comes, you'll be like, oh, the waiting was worth it. And it all makes sense now. We'll do two more questions. Okay. We can try to do rapid fire again if we need to. What's the difference between a wife mindset and a girlfriend mindset? Ooh, I've never been asked that before. Well, I mean, again, you got to know that a wife is a wife's and in a covenant. Don't, don't give me a cliche. I want, I want the real answer. Well, the real answer is that a wife has wife privileges and duties that a girlfriend doesn't like a girlfriend. You're not doing his laundry. You're not sleeping with him. You're not called to submit to him. You're not called to, um, have to necessarily bow down to him. Like you submit first to Christ and Christ alone. And that guy better be submitted to Christ first as well. But when you are a wife, you are called to lay your life down. You're called to submit. You're called to honor your husband. You're called to, um, respect your husband. Like with a boyfriend, yes, you want to respect him. Like, of course, but like that, so many of the things that the Bible says are meant for marital roles only, spouse roles only. So I think a lot of us are giving boyfriend's wife access when he is not your husband and he's not your spouse. He doesn't have a ring on your finger. And so that looks like we could be, you know, doing his laundry and cooking and cleaning for him. And yes, there's things you can do like here and there, but like, don't treat this man as your spouse and as your husband when he's just not you're bending over backwards for a man that has not given you a covenant. He has not said, I do. He has not given you vows before in front of people. And so stop giving him all those privileges. And so a girlfriend can honor him, can love him, can respect him, can, you know, serve him and do all the things and show him I'm a good wife. I'm going to be a good wife one day, but there's certain things that are just meant for a spouse, you know, reading the Bible together, probably praying together, um, honoring him in certain ways, um, what else would you say? Like obviously sex. And I would say it's not sleeping in the same bed together and not doing everything together. You're not bound to this person. You still have autonomy. You still have your own ministry. You're still figuring it out. You still have your own bank account. You still have your own apartment. You still have your own house. Like you are not one. So don't act as such when you're still a girlfriend. This is a good question. Do you ever struggle with trusting new friends due to your job? All the time. Yeah. It is. Tough. It's hard. Yeah. yeah, I, 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 yeah, there's times when people pop up out of nowhere from high school or past or whatever, and they're 
they're doing some very overly nice, overly nice or trying to get me to do things or like, I don't know. I, I definitely do struggle with sometimes questioning people's intentions. I'm like, and I hate that. I never want to look at somebody and be like, you are, you have an ill intention. Like yeah. I always want to give people the benefit of the doubt, but I, I have been taken advantage of. I have seen people use me. I have seen people try to use me to get to other people and it's not a fun feeling. And so I always naturally am going to have a little bit of a guard up, but I'm still going to try to give people the benefit of the doubt. I think it was interesting. Like when we got married and I, like I really started to feel more comfortable with like telling you certain things. And, and I would, I was surprised with how many people would take advantage of you and you didn't either know, or do you, like you don't have that attitude where you, I feel like I had to tell you, Hey, mm-hmm. this person is, is using you or this, this person who works for you is not, you know, has your best interest. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. And cause you really do see the best in people. And I feel to, to like a fault. Yeah. To a fault for sure. And so it is tough. Uh, you, you said it right. Like you never want to have the attitude of better than, or you're using me. Cause if you have that thought process about everybody, you're never going to meet anybody, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah, you don't want to go around being like, Oh, I'm so holy. Like everybody yeah. wants access to me, but there are certain people where you, you, they text you or they invite you and you're like, why, why are you really inviting me? Like we haven't talked in three years, <laughs> you know? Amen. All righty. Well, that was, that was amazing. That was fun. Well, thank you guys for your questions. Done. You are a f- you spit fire, dude. Y- y'all, sometimes I like rewatch these videos and I'm like, did any of that make sense? I'm so sorry if it didn't or if it came across mean. But, no, it did. But thank you guys for listening. No, you could you could just... The fact that you do solo podcasts and you speak by yourself for an hour <laughs> is the most impressive thing in the world. Like, I could never do that. Yes, you could. No, I could you not. You could. No. Y'all, we're going to Utah this weekend for a speaking engagement and we're doing a panel and honestly, panels are my favorite. Like when people just ask me questions, yep. I'm like, I love it. I just, I love it. It's so fun for me. We're talking about how to start a podcast. How to create a successful podcast. Which yeah. is fun. Um, but thank you so much. We are going to finish this question. These questions. We're going to ask probably, you know, 15 more on mm-hmm. our Patreon. Yeah. Uh, so go subscribe to our Patreon. Um, it is a small little community. I think we got like, you know. We got like 120 people. Yeah, 120 people. Uh, we get two extra podcasts a month, uh, which we go a little deeper. Yeah. Guys, you know, with, with you know, censorship, there's certain things you can't talk about on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, so go subscribe to our Patreon. We're going to finish this conversation over there. Yeah, you guys, you there's some honest questions in there that you guys asked us, and we'll finish the rest on Patreon. And, and if you subscribe, yeah. you get access to all the other content stuff mm-hmm. that has been posted previous. Um, any last things? Yeah, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We truly pray that this podcast is a blessing. It it is so much fun for me to just see you guys reshare it and get blessed by these. And y'all, my book has been out for a month. And so it's so fun seeing you guys read it and tag it. Please keep tagging me what you're learning, what you're enjoying. If you haven't got it yet, it's called Becoming Happy and Healthy Real Life Advice on Friendship, Dating, Career, and everything else you care about. It's my story in all 14 chapters. And also it's to help you navigate all the struggles that you're facing in your young adult years and honestly in life in general. And so if you have a friend that you know you could bless us with, a graduating student, if you're a college student, this book is for you. The link will be down below. And also right now, you guys, when you go to my website, if you um, order the book or you sign up for my newsletter, you can start getting the first chapter right now for free. So go click the link down below. You can start reading my book now. Amen. You're beautiful. I love doing this with you. My best friend. I love you. And uh, I can't wait to start this run club. Let's go, you guys. Yeah, follow me on Instagram because we'll post when we're doing the run club. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. I hope this podcast blessed you. Thank you to my interviewer today. He's feeling a little under the weather, so sorry if he's a little sleepy today. Love you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. See you guys next week for another episode of Happy and Healthy. But until then, stay stay happy and healthy. happy and healthy. Because it's all we ever wanted. It's all we ever wanted. Go drink some coffee. Go I have an snuggle drink. I your should. best friend. Don't snuggle your boo. You know. Unless no, you- snuggle your boo if you're married. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye bye.